we have seen the structure of ear and even the word gate. But here we are talking of all three parts, how they connect it and how ears help us in hearing. So this is basically the working of ear and we know our ears help us in two things. One is hearing and the second function is balancing an equilibrium. We have seen this part in detail when we were talking about structure of crista and macula. We are now discussing how these parts of ear help in hearing. We have, uh, when we made the diagrams, we said the external middle ears we made together and we said later on, after understanding the structure of inner ear, we'll connect all these three structures. We have separately drawn the structure of cochlea also. So now we'll connect all these three parts, that is external ear, middle ear and inner ear and understand how our ears help us in hearing or detection of quality and quantity of sound. So external ear, I'm just drawing the auditory canal, that is external auditory meters and it ends in tympanic membrane. Here is our external ear, that is the pinna part with its lobe and helix. This is external auditory meters. External auditory meters. It is also known as external auditory canal. And this membrane which we have drawn is the tympanic membrane or our eardrum. This is the external ear, two parts of it. The middle ear is the air filled cavity and it is connected to the pharynx part with the help of eustachian canal. So we are not going into details of this. We just want to show how various parts help us in detection of this sound. So this canal is eustachian canal and it has a wall closer to the pharyngeal opening. This is middle ear. This complete part is the middle ear and it is air filled. There are three bones which are present. We call them ear ossicles. The first one which is attached to the tympanic membrane and is hammer shaped is malleus. Then the next one that is anvil shaped that is incus and the third or the smallest one is the stepes. So this part or this bone is the stepes. This is stirrup shape. So let us label these three bones. This is malleus. The second one is incus and third one is stepes. The stepes part or this bone is connected to the oval window of cochlea. And as we want to understand the working, we are drawing cochlea again in the form of a straight tube instead of a coiled structure. So let us make this inner part of cochlea. We have drawn this structure in detail. So this part complete is cochlea. The upper compartment is tympana vestibuli. This is media and the lower one is scala tympani. Sorry, this one is scala vestibuli. This is scala media and scala tympani. The roof is resonors membrane. Resonors membrane and the floor is the basilar membrane. And on the basilar membrane are present the sensory hair. So here we have these organ of quality and all of them have this 
stereocilia and from the bottom part arise the nerve fibers. And here we are not drawing those supporting cells and all. Let us draw the tectorial membrane, this gelatinous membrane which is here, that is the tectorial membrane. So this one is tectorial membrane. And this red thing is organ of corti. Now, how is the sound wave detected? When the sound waves fall on tympanic membrane, that is our eardrum. So sound waves, they fall on this membrane. As soon as the sound waves hit this membrane, the membrane starts to vibrate. These vibrations from the membrane are passed on through these ear ossicles and finally they come into the cochlear part. The upper compartment is filled with perilymph, lower compartment with perilymph. The middle compartment is filled with endolymph. Now these vibrations, they have traveled from bone to bone and then from here to the liquid. So middle ear actually amplifies the sound wave. So if we have to sum up the functions of all, what would external ear do? External ear's job is to collect the sound waves and focus them on the tympanic membrane. So its job is collection of sound waves and focus on tympanic membrane. This is the job of our external ear. Now second is middle ear. The job or the function of middle ear is to magnify or amplify the sound. So it helps in amplification of sound by 22 times. Now how have we achieved this 22 times amplification? There are three factors which are responsible for it. Number one, the area of the membrane to the bone attachment and the oval window. So first factor is the area of bone to tympanic membrane and oval window. This helps in amplification and here the amplification gets 2.2 times. This change is 2.2 times. What is happening is the tympanic membrane is bigger. The bone is attached to the complete part. That means the sound waves because of this vibration of tympanic membrane, they are collected by this big piece of bone. Now, there is a narrow step piece which is attached to the oval window. So, collection part is bigger and transmitting part is smaller. So, here it gets amplified 2.2 times. This is one factor. The second factor which helps in amplification is the lever-like arrangement of the bones. So, ear ossicles, when they pass these uh, sound waves, they act as lever. So, ossicles act as levers and amplify it 10 times. So, 2.2 times by this area difference and 10 times by the lever action of these ossicles. So, if we multiply this, we get 22 times amplification. Plus, one more factor is there because now sound waves are going from air to liquid medium. This is an air filled compartment. From here they are passed on to the liquid that is the perilymph which is in the cochlear part. Now the amplified sound waves they are transmitted to the liquid. Now the vibrations they come into this part that is perilymph. When the perilymph is vibrating these vibrations are also affecting resonor's membrane. The vibrations also travel to the lowermost compartment 
Here also when perilymph vibrates, these vibrations affect the basilar membrane also. Now basilar membrane is vibrating and when basilar membrane vibrates, these stereocilia which are here, these stereocilia, they get disoriented in the tectorial membrane and as soon as their position changes, a stimulus is generated and it is carried by the nerve fiber. Now what happens to those vibrations which are there? These vibrations, they are lost from this window. This window is the round window. So round window, it acts as a vent or a pressure relief wall. It is pressure relief wall. So all that sound waves which are trapped here, they escape from this. Here is our oval window. So this is oval window. So middle ear and cochlea, they are connected by two windows. There is oval window where steppes is attached and the round window is just a membrane through which the sound waves are going to escape. So that sound waves do not remain trapped in the cochlear region. We said that this co uh, cochlea is attached to the saculus part of the vestibule. So this is where it is attached to, I'm just making this box so that we understand where the attachment is. So this is saculus part of the vestibule. So there are two parts, the utriculus and the saculus. The bottom part of the saculus is attached to cochlea. So cochlea is attached to saculus also as well as to middle ear. So this is how we are able to detect. If we have to come to the function of inner ear, it is mainly hearing. And now what are we able to detect when we say we are detecting a sound? We can differentiate between female voice. We can also differentiate various types of voices, female voice, male voice. And we can also detect loudness of the sound. So how is that detected? Sound waves, when they stimulate the sensory cells towards the tip of the cochlea. So when, this, or let me put it the other way, high frequency sound waves stimulate the cells which are towards the tip. High frequency that is towards the tip and low frequency low frequency stimulates the cells towards the basal part of the cochlea. So this is how we detect the frequency high frequency sounds or low frequency sound. So if sound waves are stimulating the cells which are towards the tip we know it is high frequency. Sound waves, when they are stimulating the basal cells, that means the cells towards the lower side, then it is low frequency. And loudness is detected by how many cells are stimulated. So louder the sound, more and more cells get stimulated. So which area is stimulated tells us the frequency and how many cells are uh, stimulated tells us the sound quality, uh, sorry, quantity, loudness of the sound. So this is how the hearing part works. Now with this, we have completed the structure of ear. It's working also for the hearing as well as for balancing. So we have come to the end of sense organs now.